All right, now to our first conversation. Report from the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations uh, shows the power uh, barometer for world food commodity prices declined slightly in June. Uh, for the third consecutive month, the drop in June reflected declines in international prices of vegetable oils, cereals, and sugar, while dairy and meat prices increased. Another report uh, sites that uh, from the United Nations uh, Food and FAO uh, published in collaboration with the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development warns that about 19.4 million people in Nigeria could face food insecurity uh, between June and August 2022. Well, join us now uh, to unpack um, all of this. We have Tunde Banjoko, MD, uh, Bio Farms. Join us right here in the studio. Great to have you. Thank you, Ladi. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> so, uh, first of all, let's look at this uh, drop in prices for some of these international commodities yeah. there. It's a consecutive month now. Would we say we're out of the woods, you know, when it comes to uh, most of these prices for a uh, couple because we've seen them skyrocket, yeah. you know, a couple of months now? Yeah, no, we are not out of the wood. We are still, what we are experiencing at the moment, or what the report is just extraying is, I mean, what has been happening for the last three months. So, and it's really due to harvest, seasonal harvest. So it's normal. And what we should be looking at is the price 2021 and 2022. When we look at some of these prices, I mean, some of the products that have been quoted, cereal, oil, and sugar. I will look at those today. Let's look at those today as an example. For example, cereal is being about from maybe the last three months. And then when you compare this year, 2022 and 2021, there's been about, I'm talking about June 2020 to June 2021, there's right. been about almost close to 27% increase from what we have last year. And just the slight decrease is because of what countries like Argentina and Brazil pushed into the market for cereal and with the I mean with the hope that US is also going to push more into the market so that's for cereal for oil palm for example let's use Nigeria as an example for the last 3 months our harvest in Nigeria for oil is between February and May so that period the price will always dip and the same thing with other producing nations, like Indonesia is being projected to produce more and push into the market this period. Yeah, for Ukraine, for example, this period, there are wheat should have been in the market. Some are also in the market. Some other Eastern Europe countries are pushing into the market. So it's really uh, a seasonal thing. It's just due to harvest, increased production, and speculation of more products being pushed into the market. Because so the really, war is still on. The war is still on. So, <laughs> so, so that's just the reason we are not out. Because, like I said, you look at for cereal, 27% higher than last 2021 June. You look at for wheat, we are 48% higher than what we were doing last year June. You look for oil, the same thing. Sugar, there's been a little. I mean, the demand has been a bit reduced. That's why the price seems to be on that So For it, to the question, we are not out. We are just we'll, enjoying we'll, the... We might not see the trend actually continue. Uh, the trend might not continue maybe in the next two, three months. Let's assume this for this quarter. For next quarter, it might not be the same. Might not be the same. All right, we'll keep tracking that. But the, the, the report uh, also from the FAO... Uh, yeah. showing that about 19.4 million people in Nigeria could face food insecurity T. between uh, now and August. Now and uh, August. That's really a <laughs> high number. In it. We're in it already. At, at this point. So, you know, that's a scary number, that 19.4 million people. But, you know, the way I, I always track things is we didn't just get here. We look at what was the number last year. We were told 12.8 million people are suffering severe hunger. In Nigeria what did we do did we do anything uh, by May 2022 the number had increased to 14.4 million people with about 368,000 even in IDPs suffering the same hunger so they are in the camp but they are still hungry and then now they are telling us that between June and August the number will move from 14.4 million to 19.4 million additional 5 million going into that bucket that's a huge number, and 
uh, you know, what interests me about the report is, you look at the states, 21 states in Nigeria, including Lagos and FCT. You know, so I asked myself, so are, you, are we also going to go hungry in Lagos? Yes. So if they are telling us, even Lagos and FCT, and amazingly, of course, most of the country states in the north are going to go into that bucket as well. So I, I think uh, it's a scary number. And uh, also seeing that the Federal Ministry of Agriculture is also working with them. So the issue, you know, before now what we used to see is that no, the number so is the not true. Is quite the number is not true. Legit. They, are, they, are, they, are, they have been falsified. And then when you also look at backtrack to 2015, you look at 2015, what was the data? We were told, okay, 9% of the population. 2016, we moved to 12% of the population. 2017, we moved to 14%. By 2018 to 2020, we moved to about 21% being projected and they are even telling us it might by 2020 to 2022 forecast we might be having about 3 percent of our population in serious that's a big number that, that's that's uh, a big number and uh you know we, with uh, what we're seeing happening in most of these other countries like sri lanka for yeah. uh, for instance now it's uh, it's not looking good because it's the same shortage it's not, you know most of these countries it's not, and, and you know when you look at the full fao report is saying 43 countries 33 in Africa, 10 in Asia, and then some other. So it's really a global thing. And but really, but what can we do here uh, to <laughs> reverse this? To reverse this is we need to now start getting serious as a nation. We need to start getting serious. Let me use, I mean, some of the recent issues that we are having of wheat not being supplied into the market. Uh, countries like Ivory Coast, I was reading some reports yesterday, Ivory Coast started using cassava flour for baking of their bread. This was, this, I mean, this was first introduced into by President Obasanjo. We didn't embrace it. President Jonathan also in, introduced, that let's start using cassava flour to substitute part of our wheat so that we can reduce dependence on wheat. Nigerians said, no, the taste of the bread and the cookies are not what we are used to. We rejected them. And now for a country that prides itself as the highest producers of cassava, 59.4 metric ton thereabouts, so meaning we can actually produce enough, even though what we are producing is not enough, but we can jack it up to an extent whereby we can substitute with about 10, 20% and reduce dependence on wheat. For example, Nigeria, we import over 6 million tons of wheat yearly. We produce, we just increased production from 55,000 to 99,000. Last year, we were told we spent 1.3 trillion on wheat alone. In 2020, 2020 we did about 797 billion on wheat alone. Taking out all of that pressure. Taking dollars, all maybe. of that outside of the country. But what is countries like Sudan doing? Sudan now started cultivating their own wheat. Now they cultivated 65,000 ton on about 317 hectares. And in two seasons, they were able to get 1.1 million tons. So if a country like Sudan can do that, and we are still talking about 99,000 tons, and then, but CBN, I think, is coming up with a program for 2022 to cultivate on 100,000 hectares, increase our production to 400,000 hectares. If CBN is able to achieve that, I think they are committing about 42 billion into that. If they're able to achieve that, I think that will start. So really to the question, we need to start, you know, when we say buy Nigeria, grow Nigeria, you know, it's a, it's a slogan for most of us. But now we need to tame our tongue. We need to tame our tongue, start appreciating and embracing what we have. Right. What's in the taste? <laughs> 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 All right, so talking about uh, interventions, now we see the EU uh, looking at investing about 1.3 billion euros in the ag in Nigeria's agricultural yeah. uh, sector. Uh, quite a, a, a good, a, a good Remember, amount. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, where, should, where, where should they be uh, concentrating spending you know, of this money at this point? There are so many areas they can. I, I think I will advocate for those commodities that take bulk of our forex in the agric industry. For example, you look at why are we buying what we are buying at the rate we are buying these days. Some of them are so simple. 
we just give an example of wheat. Now, a loaf of bread that we used to buy four or five hundred, some are going as high as seven, eight hundred, just because of wheat. So now farmers are ready to, to cultivate. So if we can empower wheat farmers, Borono State used to be our highest producers. Now, because of insecurity, they are not doing as much. Jigawa is our main wheat market now. So we should start looking at those commodities driving our numbers. Secondly, is why is egg on the high side? Let's give a little number. We used to buy a crate of egg in Nigeria before, 700. Even about a year ago, 700, 800, a crate of egg. But now it's between maybe 2,000, 2,400, depending on where you are buying. Why is that high? Because of maize and soya, that is primarily the product used in feeding the beds. So why are we struggling with that? Because there's no feed. So can we have irrigated farms? So they should be looking at irrigating farms that will give us maize all year round. Now everybody's eating maize, buying maize, because it's in season. I'm sure when the rain stops, you don't get to buy. And you know, I wanted to buy somewhere in Vienna on Saturday, 300 per one, you know, because I irrigate my farms and all that. You know, I, you have to ask yourself, ah, 300 per one, because she irrigated her farm. So what am I saying is, EU and other intervention programs, you start looking at those specific commodities driving the export. You know, I looked at the 2021, I mean, the import bill of Nigeria, which was second to petrol, which was second. So meaning is not a small number going into that space. So wheat, maize, soya, I mean, irrigation should be funded and last scale farming. Right. I think if we're able to do that, and you see a lot of farmers now, even those that are into egg production, that are into poultry, are going into broilers. Some of them will tell you, I can't cope with these numbers anymore. I'm selling the egg, the middlemen are even making more profit than I am making. Right. So let, rather let me just breed these chickens for six weeks, sell and make my little margin, turn it around. and all. So we should look at how can we help this people in this sector as well. So the feed has to go down. And of course, if they are able to give us one thing farmers are always asking for, single digit loan, long term. Single digit loan, <laughs> very important. <laughs> and and, and at, at a time when, you know, uh, we're seeing central bankers hike rates, you Man. know, trying to tame inflation. So sure. that'll be quite a, a tough one. To it, it, no, no, but but it's not impossible. It's not impossible. So it's just for us to get our priorities right. Uh, it, like I said, if, for example, we look at our 2022 budget, 290 billion, and we are importing with a loan, 1.3 trillion, this, and you look at the numbers. So we are importing, the dollar is going high. So why not let's just put that same money in those things driving the numbers? Exactly. So it makes, it makes sense. It makes sense. Right. So now you want to, people are importing jollof rice into Nigeria, people are importing steel. People are importing. Rice. I'm and telling Nigerian you, jollof is supposed to be the you best. You know, we are told, we are told that jollof. <laughs> so you know, the other day, I also rice. saw momo. Sorry for if that's not allowed on this. No, you please, know, momo. Right. What our you know our food bokoto being killed from a country in Asia, roasted, packed into stew, imported into our country. That makes no sense. <laughs> you are telling. You know, when we have enough ranch that we can invest in like uh, you know in AKT I've seen one very lovely one maybe I'm not to mention their name very lovely ranch in Nigeria people are doing well why are we not encouraging them why are cows still going from Cardinal to, to Lagos before they can feed and then all that so let's invest in all yeah, these ranching, things that's another, ranching that's uh, another conversation another area yeah, yeah very, that one needs to look and into thank it, you so much to add to that you know you yeah. look at in, in 2021 we imported milk alone from Ukraine with about close to 800 million milk. Wow. When we have cows everywhere. everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Mr. Tunde Badrick, MDBO fans. It was great having a conversation with you. We keep tracking you know, that sector because we all need to eat. We Thank all you. need to Thank eat. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much, Ladi. All right, now we'll take a moment now.